everyone, and welcome to the Vendo Podcast. My name is Nicholas Martinez, and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Vendo. And today we've got a really exciting topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about the on-site editorials on Amazon. Amazon on-site associates, as some of you may know it. Now, this has been a program that's been around for, you know, a couple years now, actually, I believe. Uh, definitely at least a year. And uh, although it's become more and more prevalent in recent times, uh, a lot of sellers still um, don't quite understand how to get involved in the program and you know what it takes to get your editorial live and running. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with on-site associates editorials or editorial recommendations, they are essentially PR meets Amazon. So when you go to Amazon, you search a certain keyword. Uh, in the search results, you're going to see ads, organic results, and you will also see um, some editorial recommendations. So let me go ahead and share my screen here and show you all exactly what that looks like, just in case um, you are wondering. And then we'll dig into how you can get your own editorials uh, to show up on here. So if you can see the screen here, I've just searched this term steak knife as an example. And if you scroll through, you know, you've got your your headline ads here at the top, your sponsored brand ads, as they're known, your sponsored product ads, uh, more sponsored product ads, uh, video ads, and then you hit this section called editorial recommendations. So this is what we're talking about. How do you get your product to be featured in an editorial showing up at the top of page one uh, in this very uh, prominent place? Um, and so let's, let's, let's talk about it. Um, so basically how this works is, um, again, it's like PR meets Amazon. So um, what we've done here at Vendo is we have formed partnerships uh, via a strategic partner of ours with uh, different publishers. And so what happens is um, any of the brands we work with, we do the research to figure out which product and which keywords we want to target. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and then we go to our network of publishers via our strategic partner and we pitch the product to those publishers. Um, and so whichever publisher decides that they wanna write that editorial, we'll go ahead and say, hey, this product looks interesting on brand with our, with our, um, with our publication, and we wanna write an editorial on this. And so they take the product, they take the three keywords that we've given them because we wanna choose three keywords to be optimized in the editorial. That way, when people search those keywords, the product shows up in search results. Um, so we give those three keywords and we give the product to the publisher and they do their thing and write their editorial. Now, because it's an editorial, it has to be unbiased. Um, so there really isn't any control. You can't control what they say or write about your product. Now, um, as I'll show again, when we look at this example here, um, it is usually done in a positive light. So the best steak knife best all around, also great, best stainless steel. And if you go ahead and open up this editorial here, you'll see again that it is done in a positive light. Uh, best all around, what we liked, we like how easy it is to cut meat. Um, what do they like about this runner up? D don't let the price fool you. Uh, it doesn't slack when it comes to quality. So again, almost always you're gonna see it done in a positive light. So I know some brands get a little worried that their product's gonna be written about negatively, um, but we've only seen that maybe once out of you know, 50 plus editorials we've, we've ran in the last six months or so. Um, so overall, the content is very positive, right? But when you're talking about the, what can be written in this editorial, really the only thing that you can control again is the keywords in the product. So let's say you were to submit the keywords best steak knife. You want, you want your product to come up when people search best steak knife. You want that editorial to show up. Well, the likeliness of the publisher writing the editorial about the best steak knives is going to be much higher, right? Because you've restricted them to that keyword, best steak knife. Um, so yeah, that's you know essentially how it works as the first step goes. You, you, you do your keyword research, you pick your product, you give it to the publisher, net, uh, you, you, you kind of blast it out there to the network of publishers, um, which we can help you with and provide more um, advice on. And then the publisher writes the editorial and then that editorial then gets put on the desk of Amazon's editorial moderation team. Okay, so again, the strategic partner that we've made, 
um, is essentially the person that is the middleman or the people that are the middleman between the publisher, the brand and Amazon. Um, and so then you get this uh, editorial put onto the Amazon's uh, editorials moderation desk. They read the editorial. And so long as they approve the content of the editorial, they're gonna go ahead and approve it for placement. And then what that means is when people search steak knives or whatever the three keywords are that you've, you, you've targeted, your editorial is going to show up. Now, it's not going to show up all the time. And when we talk about the keyword research process, I'm going to give some tips and tricks on how to maximize the likeliness of your editorial showing up. But, it, you know, as long as all things work out smoothly, Amazon approves your editorial, you've chosen good uh, strategic keywords, your editorial is going to show up when people type in those search terms. So let's talk about how we're going to um, choose keywords, right? And, uh, and, and uh, make sure that we maximize the likeliness of the editorial showing up, make sure that we maximize the likeliness of sales. So let me go ahead and share my screen again here. And for those of you not watching, I'll, I'll try to guide you through. Um, basically, let's take one of the products here, the, this, this steak knife here, the um, J.A. Henkel's steak knife. Um, and let's do a Cerebro uh, reverse ASIN search on it. Um, you know, we like to use uh, Helium 10 Cerebro tool here. Now, as we know with Amazon, they don't want to show products that aren't relevant to the customer's search, right? So if you're a steak knife and you're ranking, you know, more than 50 for a keyword, you don't want to submit that keyword for the editorial. Why? Because Amazon's going to be less likely to show that editorial. And then all of this work is going to be for nothing. So what we've learned over our, our six plus, you know, well, actually, it's probably about nine months now of managing these editorials. Again, 50 plus editorials across 50 brands. What we've learned is if you want your editorial to have a good chance of showing up, pick a keyword where your product is ranking already in the top 50. OK, and so let's take a look here at the search results. Let's pretend that this is one of our products and we want to submit them. We're going to look at um, the different rankings of this product. Um, and we want to pick the keywords that have the highest search volume, right? So we want to pick keywords that are ranking in the top 50, but also have the highest search volume. So I like to scroll through by search volume and then look over here at organic ranking, search volume, organic ranking. Now knife set by search volume is the biggest keyword, 276,000 monthly searches. However, this product's only ranking 170 right now. So even though I want to, I, part of me wants to submit this product on this keyword because it has the most searches, going to get the most views, the most sales potential. I'm going to hold back until this product is ranking in the top 50, because I know from experience that even if this gets approved, it's very less, uh, very unlikely to show up when people search knife set. So it's going to be worthless. So let's keep scrolling through them. Uh, kitchen knife set, another good one, 74,000 monthly searches, but again, only ranking in the uh, 155. Chances of this editorial actually showing up, getting a share of voice, as it's called, is very low. Um, steak knives, all right, here we go. So this is the fourth biggest keyword by search volume. It gets 53,000 monthly searches, and we're ranking number three. Boom, that is a sure... Uh, bet that we're going to get placement. We're ranking number three. The likeliness of our editorial getting approved and populating is very, very high. So I would, I would go ahead and choose steak knives as a, as a sure, sure bet here. Um, and then we, we're just going to keep scrolling through until we, we find three that we want to choose. So looking at organic ranking here, we're not ranking in the top 50. What's the next one? Okay, we're ranking number 18 for ceramic knife. So that's the next best one by ranking and it gets 22,000 monthly searches. All right, so that looks like a good one. Um, you know, as long as this knife is actually a ceramic knife, um, you know, we don't wanna choose keywords that aren't true because that's just gonna lead to low conversion. Um, as long as this is actually a ceramic knife, um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one. Um, so I don't know this product, it was just an example, but let's just assume it's a ceramic knife. We're gonna choose that one, ceramic knife and knife sets, uh, excuse me, steak knives. Those are our two keywords so far. And then we're just gonna keep scrolling until we find more keywords within the top 50 ranking. All right, steak knife set of eight. 
This is the next highest search keyword with 11,000 monthly searches. It's also the next best keyword ranking in the top 50. This is a steak knife set of eight. So I know that it's factual and it's gonna convert because it's true. Um, so that's probably gonna be my next keyword, steak knife set of eight. Now, something you might notice is that these three keywords have a high organic ranking already. They rank two, they rank 18, and they rank three. Um, so the organic ranking impact of this editorial on those keywords is gonna be pretty minimal, right? Because it's already ranking super high. Um, but the keyword impact on ceramic knife where it's only ranking 18, that can be quite beneficial. You know, if we're able to target that keyword, we're ranking 18, we're able to gain sales on that keyword through the editorial, through organic ranking and through ads, we're gonna boost the, the, the um, ranking of that keyword and that product. And that's gonna uh, uh, equate to an increase in organic sales, right? So let's take a step back here. We've chosen the three keywords. We've, um, we're gonna submit them to the publishers. We're gonna submit the product to the publishers. And what, 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 what are we hoping to happen here? Now, the editorial is gonna show up, right? And this is gonna create an environment where the search results are heavily um, dominated by this product. So just imagine this, let, let me share my screen again. Just imagine this. You're running an editorial on this product. You're targeting steak knives, steak knife set of eight, ceramic knives. You're targeting those three keywords. Your editorial is showing up. Then you are also targeting those keywords through ads because you want to make sure that when someone searches those keywords and they see your editorial, they also see your product in as many other positions as possible. So when you look at the advertising placement here, we want to make sure that this product is showing up here. We want to make sure that it's showing up in the sponsored ads here, sponsored products ads. We want to make sure that it's showing up in the video ads here, and then it's going to show up in the editorial. So just imagine that you're searching steak knives, your editorial comes up, your headline sponsored brand ad comes up, your sponsored product ads come up, your video ads come up. That is four placements where you are showing up. And that editorial is so prominent and it comes with so much credibility that what this does is it creates an environment where people are going to be more likely to click your ads, more likely to click your organic search rank results, and more likely to click your editorial. So again, it creates this environment that is dominated by, with your products. And then what that does is that boosts the click-through rate on all those placements, boosts the sales on all those placements. And as that happens, your organic ranking for those keywords begins going up, going up, getting better, getting better, um, or ranking goes lower, right? Closer to number one, depending on how you look at it. And thereby your organic sales go up. And so that's really the true power of this editorial. It's not so much how many people are going to click your uh, search, your, your product in the editorial. Now that's a part of it. You can actually track how many people clicked my product in this editorial placement or clicked my product in this actual article. That is something that we can track through the link. So we know exactly how many sales in, came from this actual editorial. Then we're going to look at how many sales did we see on the ad? Was there a positive correlation when this editorial was running with the ad performance? Because that's, that's again, a big benefit of this. Did my ad click-through rate and conversion go up as this editorial was running? So we're gonna look at ads. Then we're gonna look at organic ranking. We're gonna be tracking the organic ranking of those keywords. Did the ranking go improve? As the ranking improved, did the organic sales improve, right? And then we're also going to look at what percentage of the time that somebody searched steak knife did my editorial actually come up? Because it's not going to come up 100% of the time. And it's not like ads where you can bid to increase the share of voice or the placement. How you increase the share of voice or placement is by picking keywords where your product is relevant and already uh, uh, ranking in the top 50. So these are all the different buckets that you're going to be looking at. But we're going to have another podcast on this, everyone. We've been seeing great results with this when you choose the right keyword. Now, it is a beta program, so it's not without flaws. There are issues that Amazon is, is you know, ironing out on their end to make sure that this is as strong and as, um, 
as uh, you know, consumer and, and, and really uh, brand confident as possible. They're trying to um, enhance confidence among brands that, that are leveraging this program. So it's not without flaws, but what we've learned here at Vendo is as long as you are strategic with your keyword selection, you're strategic with your product selection, and then you supplement it with ads and ad advertising campaign, um, you're gonna see big wins. And what do I mean by big wins? Well, with the, with the brands that do see a high percentage of share of voice, you know, at least 30, 40% uh, placement of their editorial, we're seeing upwards of 50 to 70% increases in sales on that main product that we're targeting. We're also seeing increases in sales on the variations, right? Because even though you're targeting one product, like this example shows, there's all these child ASINs that are going to pick up sales because of the editorial. There's that halo effect that comes into play. So across the board, you know, we're seeing 50 to 70% increases. I just had one brand saw an increase of 122% um, with this editorial running in the first month. So really, really strong wins, but you got to be strategic about how you choose your product, how you choose your ASIN, how you set it up, you know, which, which strategic partner you're working with to get this going. Our strategic partner, we're fortunate enough to have, have made a great partnership where they're actually one of the uh, teams working closely with Amazon's editorial team to ensure that this beta program continues to flourish and improve. Um, so we have a unique position of being able to actually impact the, um, the future of this program for all brands and all sellers. Um, so if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us. Leave some comments below. Reach out to us at hello at vendocommerce.com. Would love to be of assistance and make sure that you can leverage this program as well. Um, and definitely, um, yeah, be, be sure to look out for the, uh, the next episode. We're going to put out a couple of different parts, probably at least a part two, maybe a part three, where we dig into some case studies. We, we really go into what worked, what didn't work, how you can improve, um, and how you can uh, you know, protect your brand and sell more. That's what we're all about here at Vendo. Um, so thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Have a great week, and uh, feel free to uh, let us know if you have any questions.